Bat Force Radio. Bat Force Radio is rated M for mature, or should that be immature? Okay, welcome back to another episode of Grumps and Gramps from Bat Force Radio. I am Gramps. I'm Grumps. And that is everything Batman 219, Dunk Dave, the man that puts the miles in those aisles. Big life. This is a uh, lucky episode seven. Can you guys believe it's seven episodes? Wow, it's crazy. Already. Uh, I remember when this was just like, you know, a concept and we we're like, yeah, sure. We can do one. Why not? Yeah. Let's do one. Here we are. Seven. Look at us now. <laughs> oh, that COVID life. Yeah. An addiction. <laughs> yeah. Uh, joining us tonight is our second featured guest of uh, toy photography. Uh, actually, toy. I, I, I'd almost say photography artist, uh, Nate Boyer also known as Figure Fan Nate on Instagram. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy yeah. to be here. I was honored that you guys asked me. I've, I've been a big fan of the Bat Force for a long time. been following you guys. Um, so it, to, to be asked to be here is it's like a dream come true. It's awesome. Oh, wow. Well, well thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, listen, I've been a big fan of yours for a long time, you know. Yeah, I know we've been friends for a long time. Grumps, yeah. me and him talk a lot. And Gramps, I've been following you a long time. Dave, I've, I've followed you too. And Bat Force Tom, I've, I've met him at SDCC once before. He's a great guy. Um, and I and I listen to your guys' podcasts on Spotify. So I'm a well, huge fan. Just, just well, a bunch of geeks. Yeah. That respect is that respect is, you know, likewise, sir. Likewise. Um, thank, you very much. <clears throat> thank you so much for being able to join us. Now, first. Let me let me make sure this is correct. You're actually on your honeymoon right now, right? Uh, no, I'm actually back home. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, due to the whole COVID situation, we're actually going to go a little bit later out of town, probably around like December. But yeah, I did just get married. Wow. So, well, congratulations. congratulations, man. That's awesome. Thank you very much. It's been a long time coming. I've been with my uh, girl for a long time. So it's about time that we, we tie the knot. Oh, so all she right. already knew about all this stuff in the background. Oh yeah, uh, you know it's one of those things. Like and I'm sure you guys know. Like unless they're on board, it's it's not going to happen. You know, like well, this is part of my life. Yeah. So don't try to change that part of me. I, I kind of, word. <laughs> I kind of dropped this shit on my <laughs> wife because you know when we were dating, I didn't have a lot of room in the apartment that I lived in. She had already bought this house, and uh, you know I had some stuff, but not like I do now. And then it was almost like we got married and I kept unboxing and unboxing and unboxing. She's like, wait a second, where, where did all this come from? So, I guess it should be fair. Like it wasn't always like this, you know, with my display yeah. up and the toy photography. And it was more of like just privately collecting. And then it kind of kept growing and growing and growing. And she's like, oh, OK, well, this is becoming a real, real hobby now. But yeah. luckily, she's supportive, so that's cool. That's that awesome. is cool. So, yeah, um, take us into, I guess, um, where where did you all get into, I guess, the fig life collecting? Where did it all begin? Did it begin with, you know, reading comics, or were you, you know, just like toys as a kid, and it just continued, or or what? What's your what's your story, man? Yeah, so um, I'm a child of the '80s. I was born in '85. Uh, so, which I feel like is kind of like the prime time to be a kid. Um, we had uh, some amazing cartoons and properties growing up that were really just 
adopted by these companies that were just pumping out these amazing cartoons. And um, one of my first exposures to, you know, to like cartoons and figures was really the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, I got huge into that show and I'm yeah. still an avid fan of it. Um, and then, you know, my other side of my passion was Batman, um, you know, 89 Batman. Um, seeing that for the first time just blew my mind. Um, you know, it's it's actually, it was my first exposure to the character and it really just ignited this passion for Batman and just learning about who Batman's all about and the fact that he was like this normal guy uh, you know, dressing up and just kicking ass at night. I just love that <laughs> idea of it. You know, he wasn't like a Superman where he's just gifted all these powers. You know, he yeah, fights, yeah. you know, tooth and nail for everything that he has. Um, you know, obviously he's rich, but uh, he's really done a lot of training. Anyways, um, <laughs> you know, and then that kind of evolved in the, the Batman animated series. And that and TMNT were kind of like my go-to cartoons growing up. And, um, you know, just really started collecting the figures the original Toy Biz Batman, uh, the Kenner Batman figures from the Dark Knight collection, yeah. uh, the the Playmates Turtles. I mean, I've I've always kind of had figures in my life, um, you know. And when I was in high school, that kind of died off a little bit because I was trying to be the cool guy. Like, oh, I don't collect figures. <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> but then, of course, uh, I get into college and I don't care about that anymore. So I started collecting again. Um, oh wow! Yeah, and I. Uh, wasn't really collecting as avidly as I am now. You know, it's really grown into something a lot bigger than I ever imagined it would be. Um, but, you know, I've always had figures in my life. And toy photography was something, you know, when I started my Instagram account, I was just really posting my collection, uh, just, you know, boxed figures. I was a Minton card collector. I didn't want to open anything. I was all about pristine card, you know, keeping it as perfect condition as I could. You know, I had my loose figures, uh, but for the most part, if it was carded, it's usually what I was going after. But then I started uh, posting on Instagram, finding other guys that were into uh, action figures and just found this amazing community of people that were posting these toy photos. And it just blew my mind because I remember looking at some shots and I'm just like, wait, that's a that's a toy? Like somebody mm, actually yeah. did this themselves? You know, it just really blew my mind. And um it kind of ignited my passion to try it myself. And, you know, just like anything, you're a little bit rough when you start, you're learning the ropes, you know, you're trying to figure out things, but the community has always been really supportive. Um, you know, if I ever have questions, um, I can always ask somebody, JC Malone is one of those guys that I yeah. first discovered. Oh yeah. He's real cool. Yeah. He's an awesome guy. Um, you know, you can really DM him anytime and he'll talk to you about toy photos or whatever it is. Yeah, uh, but cool. there's other guys that I found in the community and just started trying to learn and improve my own craft. And, you know, it's, it's been a long, long road, <clears throat> uh, but it's really kind of ignited another passion that I have now, which is photography, okay. uh, learning about the photography side, because there's so much that goes into that. I don't think people really realize at first, you know, I started on my phone and, you know, on the phone, it's a little bit easier because the phone kind of controls everything for you but then you switch to a professional camera and you kind of have to relearn everything all over again. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm dealing with now. Um, I've, I've, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right there. I'm, I'm taking that. I've taken, I took those baby steps and now I'm taking a bigger step and man, I'll tell you what, it, it can be uh, intimidating, you know, and frustrating a lot of times, but you got to find out what works for you and, and stuff um because not everybody does their stuff the same yeah that's that's one thing that i'm learning uh little techniques how people do this i love when people show like behind the scenes of yeah, how they too. made this shot mm -hmm. i don't have enough patience to really do it on my own a lot of times <laughs> because some of these guys they must spend you know hours creating you know their content I just want to get a focused shot and then get to editing. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's I let's know. Nate. Let's take a look at uh, some of your f photos so people can actually see what we're talking about here. Um, oh. Yeah. Here here is you know a recent one from the Mezco uh, Shadow Supreme Night. That's just dope. <laughs> and that's and the, I mean, uh, the NECA dial in the background. 
That's right. And you got you must have a light in there or something, right? Yeah, I do. Um, so okay. I use I use Loom Cubes in gotcha. uh, for the longest time. I didn't use Loom Cubes. I use just basic desk desk lamps. Like I think yeah. a lot of people feel like you get into this and you got to buy the best best quality stuff, and that's not true. You know, you can start with a beginner camera. You can start with desk lamps with daylight bulbs. You know, that's what I would recommend. It won't cost you much. But um, to answer your question, in the in the window there, I have a loom cube that's kind of reflecting off a white piece of paper to make it really cool. kind of bright. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, and then I use the NECA dial in the background. And I love that NECA dial because it's modular. Um, yeah. You can take it apart. You can take pieces off of it. That's actually the bottom and the top piece just stacked on top of each other. Oh, okay. Just to make it tall enough uh, for you this. You and I had a conversation about that once because I so I I asked you if you had two, and you told me you're taking it apart to make it you know look like a street or something. Yeah, um, I, for a long time I used it as an alleyway. So you take yeah. the top part and the bottom, and then you kind of set them side by side, and then you put something in the background to make it seem like it's an alleyway. It's amazing what you can do with it. I use it. It's probably my most used tool in toy photography is that dial. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, this this Batman and this, you know, when you guys had asked me for some shots, I start looking back and, you know, I can pull really deep. But the stuff that I'm probably most proud of is my most recent stuff because it, I feel like it shows my progression, sort of just things that I've learned over time. Um, and one of the most recent things that I've learned is kind of like rain effects and okay. using... Uh, a fog machine to try to add some atmosphere. Oh, nice. Here's and one yet, with rain. Yeah. Yeah. There's Raphael. Oh, this is the, okay. that's the super seven Raphael right there. Um, you know, and just trying to learn how to do that took me some time. It's like, uh, Gramps was saying earlier, like it, you definitely have to devote some time and you have to want to learn, I think, to really improve your craft. Yeah. You know, it's something that you really got to invest some time to, to really kind of figure it out. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm really starting to get happy with the work that I produce. Obviously, I'm, I'm always trying to improve, uh, but learning the rain and the fog effects was always something that I've wanted to get into. And I'm, I'm finally starting to do it more and more and more. And now it's something that I'm kind of addicted to. How long like does a shot like this take you? Like, uh, like what's the average or like, do you do like multiple like uh, uh, movements or like, I, I don't know, like I, overall to get this one, like this, this one, this one in particular, like how long did this take you to get this one shot? This one took me probably, to be honest, probably a couple hours. Um, I think it really depends on the shot. Sometimes you get lucky and you set it up just right and you can take the photo and bam, it's done. Other times it's a grueling process. It takes some time. You got to walk away from it and come back. <laughs> yeah. um, I think like the thing that I try to focus on most is uh, the pose. That's usually what I start with first. Like, let me find a pose that I really like. And then I'll try to build the shot around that. Cause I feel like mm -hmm. that's one thing that people look at a lot is the pose. And if a pose looks wrong, it kind of sticks out and that's, you know, something that people can't stop focusing on. Yeah. So I and feel like if I get the pose right, then I can start kind of building the shot around that. Are your poses like inspired from like movie scenes, comic book scenes, or just like whatever you feel at that moment? Yeah, uh, movie scenes, comic books, um, even stuff I see on TV shows, other photographers on Instagram. You know, I won't, I won't lie and say I've never been, you know, inspired. I get inspired all the time yeah. by people in the community. There's so much good work out there. This one in particular, I was inspired. Uh, this Batman uh, and Joker shot. I was inspired by French Toy Love. Um, yes. Yeah, he did something somewhat similar with the Mafex Batman. And I really loved the idea and I wanted to try it out for myself. And I had the Supreme Knight. And so I, I nice. shot this, this one. I was cool. pretty happy with it. And, those are and the I love the ones. inclusion of the rats. You got to have yeah. rats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah rats that's rats, like right? perfect. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. And I, I love adding little details like that. The rats are actually the two on the right. The brown ones are from the Mezco Nosferatu figure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then that little white one, I think is from one of the Gotham diamond select figures. I can't oh, remember which okay. one. Oh, cool. okay. Um, but yeah, I love, I love props. I'm a big fan of props. Um, my buddy, uh, you guys have probably seen him on Instagram at prime to the first. Yes. Yeah. He makes, arcades he made me that little milk carton crate you guys see oh, down there see. Oh, oh, nice. yeah. this one 
Yes, yeah. uh, that oh. Batman arcade. Uh, yeah, he, he makes. Does, uh, I'm sorry, he does a lot of Marvel. I've seen he's been doing recently Marvel cabinets. Yeah, he. Uh, I think he started doing Marvel. Like I think one of his first one was Marvel versus Capcom two, um, and then he's just kind of blown up, you know, with popularity. And with that, he's added a lot of new cabinets. And I've had a really close relationship with him for a long time. And that's cool. He'll send me, you know, some that he's working on. Like this Batman one was one of the ones, yeah. and it just it blew my mind. I was like, holy shit, yeah. this thing is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that does look yeah. cool. And I mean, you know what? Uh, I can tell that. Um, this is exactly what Damien and, and Jonathan would do if they were just hanging out. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just like what the, what they would do. Yeah. That's what I was thinking so, to myself, you know, what, are, what do you, what are these two kids going to do? One of them that's super powerful, one of them that's super rich and, you know, probably just like any other kid, they want to hang out and play some video games yeah, and read, read saga comics. comic books. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So that's been Mecca Dio again, right? Nate? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it is the uh, oh, that is the yeah. NECA dial, um, and I use the front part of it kind of as like a a brick wall in some building or something. Yeah, and then the street scene behind that is actually from the Mezco Gordon dial piece oh, that they give you. Okay. Oh, nice! Cool, that's smart, a great idea. Damn, thanks, man. That's, that's yeah. why it's art. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, like you know, that's part of it too. Is it's it can be really tough to build a scene, but you just kind of have to think like what things might go together, what would look good in a shot. And it's definitely something I've had to learn over time and I get inspiration from the community, but um, putting things together like that and then try to make it work. That's, that's part of the fun. Yeah. Now I got a problem with this one, man. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great shot. I like it. Thank you. I, you know, I, I'm sensing a common theme, though, in a lot of your shots. Do you have any, like, inner aggression that you want to just get out and have your <laughs> figures express? Is that is this your therapy? It is kind of. I, I will say toy photography is kind of like a, a, a form of therapy for me, to be honest. <laughs> it's like a release. And um, I don't consider myself a violent guy, but I know that Batman gets in some violent fights. So if I can replicate that, um, <laughs> you know, that's what I'm definitely going to try to do. That's another thing, like action action shots i've been trying to get better at doing those and um you know this is one of those attempts at that but i love this uh these figures you know i'm a huge mezco fan if you guys can't tell a lot of these yeah, shots me too. Are mezco yeah. figures so yeah okay talk us through kind of your um i guess your timeline of collecting you said you started out with like turtles then the toy biz batman um and, you know, there's always, like with every collector, there's always kind of a natural advancement. You know, obviously, as you start working, get older, get a little more money. But when did you start getting into some of these, you know, higher price things? Did you did you collect maybe like the DC Icons or Essentials line first and then kind of graduate up? Yeah. Um, so I probably got into Mezco about let's say four or five years ago. Yeah. Um, and prior to that, to your point, I wasn't, I was trying to buy like $20 figures. That's as much as I would spend on something, you know, mainly NECA or DC direct stuff. Like uh, I loved the ice icons line. I'm still just gutted that they decided to get rid of that and replace yeah. it with yeah. essentials, yeah. which I was not a, as big of a fan of the essential stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, to answer your question, Gramps, uh, the, the DKR, Batman, the original uh, Dark Knight Returns Batman that Mezco did, I happened to come across that in a in a comic shop, and wow. uh, that was my first exposure to the brand. And I said, you know, like, what is that? Because I'm a huge you, fan of Dark Knight Returns. Were you sweating having to pay that sixty five dollars for that Mezco at the time? <laughs> I, I was. Uh, <laughs> that's probably one of the most you know, expensive figures I had bought at the time. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, you know, how am I going to justify this to the the girlfriend and you know I, you know once i pop i can't stop type of thing like once, once so i start on question. this yeah um but <laughs> yeah man that batman was so impressive i remember i got at home and the tailored clothing and just the accessories and i had never had a figure of that quality before so it yeah. hooked me i remember when that came out i mean obviously i had to have it um it was the figure that i've been waiting you know 
30 years for. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, $65. <laughs> and then they come out with all the variant colors. And I was like, okay, oh, this man. is all I can do. This is all I can do with these. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as you see here. <laughs> you do a little more. That's, that's like a third of what I have in those, man. Oh, but man. <laughs> I understand it, though, man. I mean, it's like once I started collecting Mezco, it was like I didn't look back, you know, like because yeah. I was I was I had wanted a Dark Knight Returns Batman for so long. And yeah. there wasn't really anything out there except for that DC Direct one, which was cool, but it was pretty limited in articulation. You know? Yeah. Um, but then that Mezco came out. And it, ever since then, I've just you know, been a huge fan of Mezco figures because their, their quality is just second to none, man. They're so well done. You know, and I mean, I, I pose mostly and I take photos mostly of like the Mezco, but I think I've learned with, with posing what you can and can get away with. And it's kind of actually helped me reimagine taking photos of like the you know like what you said the the DC Direct one that's a little more statuesque and limited and stuff like that and a lot of it it's about like you know the angles and and whatnot you changing the camera angle from instead of maybe just straight ahead tilt it down tilt it up tilt it from the side and stuff like that it's it's allowed me to see and try to be a little bit more creative uh, with with my shots now. I don't post a lot of my my shots because I don't feel like some of them are, are good enough to post. But that's that's the journey, trying to learn along the way. Um, I mean, one really, thing, I think you do great work, you and Grumps. I know you guys both post, and I, I enjoy that stuff. I mean, yeah. that's one of those things. Like, you. you know, if you're happy with it, if it's something that you spent some time on, then you know, post it. Everybody's in their own stage of. Yeah, learning, yeah, you know, and yeah, uh, if it's something that you've spent some time on and you're proud of it, then you know, post it. And I think people will appreciate that. Well, well that's what um, I wanted to talk about. Yeah, thank you. Um, but I, uh, you know, I don't, I'm still in the beginning stage, I feel like, right? Like, I, I you know, I'm doing photos with my iPhone and stuff like that. But, um, you know, when I post a picture or whatever, um, I always, you know, I always get positive feedback from you, Nate, and, you know, Gramps always, and um, I really appreciate, that's one of the things I've always appreciated about you, even our little, uh, you know, occasional conversations, you know, always positive feedback, and, uh, you know, that's that's why I enjoy following you, you know, you're one, of the, you're one of the guys in the community that's really positive. Does, I appreciate um, seeing that, Gramps. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, I try to you know, give what I want back. And, you know, I feel like we need to be supportive of each other. It's a small, even though it seems like a huge community, it is pretty small when you think about it and scope to other things. And the worst thing you can do is go into somebody's posting, try to criticize it. Like, you know, why would you do that? Um, Yeah. You know, I I appreciate people just having the courage to do it because, you know, like I'm sure you guys know, it's, it's kind of, at first a little intimidating you're like man i don't want to look like this nerd that's posting all these toy photos <laughs> yeah. you know? like for for a while at first i kept it kind of like my dirty little secret i didn't really tell anybody <laughs> my account. and then over time you realize like people love that stuff they're super supportive of it and most yeah. of the toy community is too um so you know for the most part i've i've had really positive feedback from the community and i try to give that out too yeah it's because you do great work, man. And um, like this one right here. I love that. Uh, oh, I love that shot. The focus yeah, on I mean, the that like perfect. Yeah, I like yeah. I love the aperture there where, you know, the focus is on Batman, even though Superman's in the foreground. Mm-hmm. It, it shows me, you know, where your heart is, Nate. <laughs> definitely batman yeah. definitely batman um <laughs> normally it's it's soup soup's getting beat down if i do a batman soup yeah. shot i mean yeah uh yeah i'm definitely a huge fan of and that px sovereign knight batman uh that's probably one of my like second yeah. favorite mezcos look at the details it looks amazing it's an amazing figure it really is yeah. 
I see the uh, the Neca dial, and I think I see a, a DC a, one of the, the Gotham. I see a piece that came with one of the Gotham figures. The uh, you, the uh, yeah, good eyes, Grumps. Yeah, yeah. What is can't walk. I, yeah, I have yeah the fire escape. Sorry, yeah the fire escape. I see yeah. that that came with Catwoman, I think. And there's the right. crate. Yeah, that's the crate from Prime to the First. And yeah, uh, yeah you got it right on the money. Um, using yeah. the Neca dial there as well. This is one of those alley shots. And yeah. then in the background, just to try to add a little bit oh, more. Oh, you have a to fence. That. Yeah, there's a fence back there, isn't there? Oh yeah, you got you got this cool fence that I see in a couple of photos. Yeah, like you did that with uh, some snake eye stuff, and I was like, "Where does he get this fence?" Let me see if you got one. You gave me one. Uh, yep, the fence. Uh, um, oh man, look at this. <laughs> this is a really recent shot, but man, I was I was so proud of this when I did it. Um, yeah, that's fun, man. That looks really fun. It was really, I, I kind of stole the pose from D Amazing. Uh, D Amazing is okay. another one of those guys that's an inspiration for me. Uh, yeah. Really, his posing, you know, I, I kind of just study the way he does posing sometimes because he's he's so good and he really pays attention to anatomy. Dude, um, I saved a bunch of his pictures just to reference, like, for posing and stuff, you know. I, I do it all the time. Sometimes I'll try to copy a pose one for yeah. one, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. I think people are weird about admitting that sometimes like, Oh, I didn't copy anybody. And it, you know, <laughs> it's, it's okay to say that you do that because, you know, I think there's a lot of inspiration out there and some guys yeah. have some incredible skill. Um, so if you try to replicate that, I don't think it's a bad thing. I recognize um, that lamp. I have yeah. it over here. <laughs> you, you got good yeah, eyes. Yeah. Crumbs. The set. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's from the, yeah. uh, the Carrie Kelly yeah. Robin. Yeah. I have that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, a lot of the times I'll buy a figure just for the prop. Um, yep. Yeah. Oh, man. I think props are just as important as the figures trying to create a, a scene that's believable. This one's amazing. Oh, this I one, just I this like, one. oh I my God. I love this one. <laughs> um, Thank you. I'm going to steal this, this one. I'm going to let you know that right now. <laughs> please. Isn't this please like, do uh, it. isn't this similar to that cover of Detective? Um, it was like 900 and something. It reminds First, me of a cover. I think I know. Sure. Yeah, I think oh, that's that my inspiration. I can't remember the yeah. number itself, but yeah, there's a cover that's a lot like this. Yeah. Which I that's kind cool. of uh, an inspiration. The, the reflection Gordon of blood is on. Batman. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Grumps, your fig knowledge is amazing. You're calling this yeah, stuff yeah. out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, that's Jim Gordon <laughs> as a uh, Thomas Wayne there. <laughs> this is all me and Graham Stu. Like we talk about this shit all day. And this is talking. just an extenuation of the conversations we have all yeah. damn day. Now, is this the girl from Eye Zombie? It is. Yep. Yes. That is the Eye Zombie figure. Yeah. That's why. I got that's her. why I have her head turned because she's like really pale. So I'm yeah. like, oh man, that's not gonna look right if I have her facing yeah, out. So I kind of cool, just had her huh? into Jim's chest like that, and then. Uh, it, it's funny, Bruce Wayne figures seem to be really hard to come by, but that Gotham one is is fantastic. Yeah, I got that I Zombie girl just to be a rando, but also for the accessories that she came with. Yeah, she came with some great accessories. Yeah, and it was like cheap. It was like sixteen bucks or something like that. I think I right. picked her up when Toys R Us was going out of business. Yeah, um, Gr for like great figures. Yeah, and that's another well, like you said it, Gramps. Like the accessories. Like I don't. Sometimes it's like I don't really care about the figure. I want those accessories. So if yeah. it's ten bucks, I'll buy it. I Why just not? bought. I just bought um, a Westworld, the Man in Black figure, just for the hat last night. Oh, nice! Because uh, <laughs> he has like this. Hat. Yeah, just for the hat, because he has like this fedora type of hat that I can use for uh, the shadow. Nice. Uh, okay. That I've got. Yeah, it's amazing um, how hard that stuff can be to come by or to find. I've been looking all over eBay for somebody that sells the right type and size of a 112 fedora, and <laughs> nobody did. And then I found it on on this guy. It's really cool. Um, okay, we've got one more here. Uh, nice, that's nice. just that's just iconic, man. I mean, even though it's simple. It's not. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. For this one, um, I actually tried a technique. It's called light painting. 
um, and you do like a long exposure shot um, and then you kind of paint over it with a light. So I use those loom cubes. Okay. So you'll kind of start the shot and a long exposure means it's that shutter is staying open for a long time to try to mm -hmm. absorb light. So then you kind of paint over the figure with uh, the loom cube, like kind of on top of it while it's shooting. Um, and this was a result of that, which is another technique I've kind of learned recently. Uh, yeah, but man, the so results. Clean. Thank you very much. How many seconds was the exposure on this? Uh, I think this was a, it was pretty short. It was like a two or three second exposure. Okay. So you have the lens open and you're just waving the light over it. Right. Yeah, okay. I definitely recommend if you're going to do long exposure, have some kind of tripod because you need to keep it extremely yeah. like steady. Yeah. Because um, if it moves around a lot, it, it's going to really kill your clarity. But yeah, that's that's kind of what I did here. Okay. Um, what kind of camera do you use besides like uh, you mentioned before? Like we, we everyone starts with their phone and stuff. And like mm -hmm. where like what after your phone, where did you um, upgrade to? Yeah, so the first um, professional, well, not really professional, but the first DSLR camera that I bought was a Nikon D3200, um, which if you are even someone interested in learning about a camera, I really recommend the Nikon. I think they're up to D3500 now. That's the standard one. But they're, they'll are they run you about 500 bucks, and they come with two lenses, and they are great cameras to learn on. I learned so much with that Nikon and I used it for probably about six or seven years. Nice. Um, and it really just kind of, you know, cause um, Gramps, it sounds like you kind of get into it, but you got to learn like, what, what does Aperture do? What does ISO do? You know, what's the F-stop do? You know, there's just all these little things that you can tweak to try to make a picture either brighter or more clear or, and they all have their own little, um, you know, effect on the, on the photo. So, uh, I had a di uh, the Nikon D3200 for a really, really long time. And then just recently I upgraded to a, a Sony a seven Mark three, um, which is a mirrorless camera. And that thing is just incredible. It's mm. a, it's a really, really nice camera. So do you have any specific lenses you use for like, um, your, do you have like a macro lens or you, do you shoot far away with like maybe a, 15 to 50 lens or, or what do you do? Yeah. So the, the Sony, I, I just have the kit lens. So the ones that came with it, um, I think it's a, it's a 15 to 85 millimeter. Um, but on the Nikon, I was using a hundred millimeter macro. So I would actually be a little bit further away and zoom mm -hmm. in, um, which I think helps sometimes if you've got a group shot, you kind of want to be further away from it um, right. and open up that aperture so, or at the F stop, excuse me to really let the clarity for all the figures. So yeah, the hundred meter, hundred millimeter macro is what I use for a really long time with that Nikon. Okay. Yeah. And that's one thing I love whenever guys, you know, post their behind the scenes because you, you get this awesome close up photo and then you see their BTS shot and you're like, man, they were like 10 feet away from this thing when they took that photo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Crazy. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Um, I'm a big fan of BTS too. I've been trying to do them more and more, uh, but it's amazing how simple some of these setups are in the yeah. photo. just doesn't look <clears> like that. You're like, there's no way this is that simple. Yeah. And I've learned a lot about how to set up that way just from watching other people's BTS. Yeah. Yeah. I, I messaged you one time because I, you know, was look at looking at one of your pictures, look amazing. And then you did the BTS and it was like a fucking piece of paper in front of a lamp or some shit. And I was like, that's it? Are you fucking that's it, kidding man. me? That's, that's art, what I, that's man. What I was trying to say before, like it doesn't take a lot of money. Yeah. You know, it's not like, I think a lot of people have this misconception, like I got to buy the best camera, I got to buy the best lights, and then I'll be a good photographer. If you can have the best equipment possible, but if you don't know how to use it, you're still going to have photos that don't come out right. You yeah, know? or have the so, vision at least. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> to, for that, um, like for a long time, like I was telling you, I was using desk lamps and to diffuse the light on a desk lamp, I was just using a, a piece of paper over it and I'd tape it on both sides. And, you know, that makes it so it's not so intense on one spot. It kind of diffuses it over a bigger area and it makes it a little less intense so you can light up more stuff. That's amazing. Uh, little, so, little tricks like that are awesome. Yeah, a little, where, where little things I've learned over time. Where do you... Ideas like for a, a, a shot start, like 
do you sit down and like I'm gonna do this or does it just pop in your head or um it it's a mixed bag really sometimes I'll just be uh, a lot of the times it's the figures so like when I got that shadow supreme knight I was just instantly wanted to do something with it um and something that I hadn't done before which was you know kind of him using his grapnel through the city um and that just kind of came to me while I was thinking about the figure but then there's other times where it's either you know I might see a a shot from someone else and i'm like man i want to try something that's similar to that because i really love that idea or i'll read a comic and i'll see yeah. a panel that i just love the the framing you know i learned a lot about proper framing from comic panels because panels are great about how to like show certain things off you know that yeah. batman soup shot i kind of stole from i think it was the hush story where they're fighting um, because there's a scene where Soups is kind of crouching in front and you can't really see him that well. And then Batman's like kind of cranking up his fist, getting ready to hit him again. Um, it, but it's comics like that, or even movies. If I see something cool in a movie, it's really a mixed bag. I mean, I don't have one set inspiration yeah, yeah. kind of comes from all over the place. Do you ever like, um, like you said, movies, right? Are you like, like you're watching a movie and like, you're like, holy shit, wait a minute, pause. <laughs> <laughs> yep i gotta That's, recreate i gotta recreate that right now with my figs because i'm like i think about that sometimes but like I don't, i'm not there yet mm -hmm. with uh pictures yet but it's like i can only imagine anyone else especially like you that uh that that does this and then you have a page dedicated to it it's like i, I can picture you just being like wait a minute that's the thing i have to recreate i'm gonna do this right now i'm gonna do this right now <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely been moments where I'll pause the movie and I've got like a notepad in my phone where I'll write down an idea. I'm like, okay, nice. I gotta create this. Or like, you know, if I can, I'll run into the room and try to at least get the pose down so it yeah. doesn't leave my mind. And then I'll yeah. know, okay, I gotta come back to that later. But yeah, that happens all the time. How about with um, like right now? There's a big uh, or uh, Ninja Turtles is huge. Batman's huge, of course. Mm -hmm. Um. Like with the with reading the comics and whatever, like has that inspired you a little more on using um, both those uh, universes and yeah. using photos? Uh, for sure, the Batman TMNT crossover um, when they did that, that and the movie, um, I got really inspired yeah. from that when I got those DC Direct figures of the movie. Um, I don't know if you guys remember those, but they were yeah the two packs cool. with like. Yeah. Yeah, it was like uh, Batman and Leonardo and Robin. And but I Robin sold my yeah. turtles. <laughs> oh, you did? No. Yeah. Yeah, I, just... I, I, I only picked up the Alfred. <laughs> no, <laughs> Alfred's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's Alfred. hard to find a good Alfred figure, really. Until that Mattel yeah. one came out, there was yeah. it was really just the DC Direct one that everybody had for Alfred. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, reading the comment and watching the movie definitely inspired me <clears throat> to shoot those figures and try to so cross they... over them as much as I can. Nice. What's your, um, you know, the Turtles have a, a couple of different lines going, Super 7, NECA, I think mm -hmm. there's another company. Like, what's your favorite line? Um, it's probably NECA, really. Um, I'm yeah. just now starting to get into the Super 7 stuff. I told myself I would not start on the <laughs> Turtles line. As you can see, I've got a whole detox full of, yeah. of Turtle stuff. No, you have to now that they have the Thundercats coming out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh man, the Super Seven stuff is great for uh, the classics. Like yeah. the Thundercats is very classic looking from even the original figures and yes. the original cartoon. That's one thing I love about the Super Seven TMNT is that they are recreations of the Playmates figures. Yeah. Um, so the original <laughs> Turtle line, they are basically recreating those in six inch form. Um, but I would say my go to is probably NECA. Uh, I love the NECA movie Turtles, they're just amazing figures. You have um, you have these uh, super size uh, turtles behind you, and I remember uh, I've I've I had them I think um. Ninety two, ninety three. My grandma took them away from me and brought them to the Dominican Republic, and that's the last time I saw them. Oh. Um, <laughs> where uh, are, are have you had those since that time period, or did you find them somewhere like? He bought him off this little old lady that you know, was selling turtles. <laughs> hey, girl. listen. She was 80 something years old. I'd be pretty pissed. <laughs> um, I wish I could say I kept these from childhood. I did have a couple of them, but those are long gone now. Um, yeah. So these actually got probably about six years ago. 
from a guy on Instagram. He was selling all four turtles. Um, no way. So I just grabbed them from him. Yeah, I mean, for just a ridiculous price. So I was like, I, I got to have it. Um, and then what, I found... I have to ask, what's the ridiculous price? Because like, I could pay, like, I'll pay a lot of money for those. Uh, they were $50 each. Uh, for That's each. not bad at all. Oh, <laughs> no. man. I, I mean, for nowadays, they're they're almost impossible to find, and they go for quite a bit more. So I was more yeah. than, I was like, all right, I'll, I'll pay that for oh, those because man. they're they're too hard to find. I'm, I'm but, going okay. to the Dominican Republic once COVID's over, and I'm looking for my <laughs> old ones. <laughs> who who is your favorite turtle, and why? Um, I would say Leonardo is my favorite, um, and it's it's a cliche, but he was the leader. You know, he was the, oh, okay. the best of the turtles. Um, you know, he was always kind of like the guy they would go to, and he was always the best fighter in my eyes. Um, and to be honest, he reminds me a lot of of, of Batman that way. Um, He's kind of like his own, you know, he's a, he's a good guy at heart, uh, but he can be tough when he needs to. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely Leonardo. He, he's my go-to. I was always a Donatello so guy. I love Donatello too. I mean, I, I, I love all the turtles. Uh, Donatello is probably the one I most personally identify with because uh, hmm. I'm kind of a nerd that way. Well, I love pizza, so I identify with all of them. <laughs> Maybe Mike ate a, a little pie today. More. Yeah, yeah the more Mikey because uh, I legit had pizza for lunch and dinner today. So uh, I'm a huge pizza yeah. fan. Well, so, Nate, yeah. while we have you on here, we wanted to tell you that another reason why we asked you to be on here is because we've nominated you to be the recipient of this month's Loom Cube uh, prize. That as a sponsor of the Bat Force, they give us. You know the opportunity to pick one uh, toy photographer that we choose, and this month we wanted to talk to you and and tell you that you're going to get one of the Loom Cube prize packs. Wow! Yeah. Wow! I'm speechless, man. Uh, you just made my day. I, that's amazing. Wow. Thank you so much. Well, you're, you're welcome. welcome, and you more than deserve it. Um, <clears throat> we'll get your information later, but wow. um, I'm blown yeah. away, dude. That's awesome. Yep. Thank you so, so much. That's you got so married cool. this weekend, and now you this is our wedding <laughs> yeah. gift to you. Yeah, you congratulations, you kind. man. Yeah, That's thank you thing. so much. That that means a lot. So I really appreciate it. And it's one of those things I kind of recently discovered, but man, yeah, their, their products are just incredible. Yeah, they're great. Too, yeah. yeah, I've really got the uh, the pro two pack, and you know, I was doing like you, I was just using desk lamps and whatever cheap lights I could find, and I mean I was doing okay, but the loom cubes, I mean, people have literally told me, man, your, your photos look so much clearer and, and more focused. What are, what are you doing different? And I'm like, really? I bought these loom cubes and it's just made a world of a difference. Yeah. I mean, for a long time, I didn't want to adopt the loom cubes. I'm just like, man, those are expensive. You know, I feel like I could do it without it. You know, as soon as I got them, it was just like, wow. And you don't know what you're missing until you get it. And just the versatility. Mm -hmm. um, I got the, the yeah. Pro 2 Pack 2 with all the accessories. And those mm -hmm. accessories are just incredible. Like the diffusers, the little um, shutter. I can't remember what that's called. The uh, little barn doors. The barn doors, that's yeah. it. And then the, the I love. The snoot. What, what am I? Yeah, the snoot. I love using the snoot. It's, I mean, just to really focus the the light towards a certain spot or even you know darken out a certain area that i don't want in the shot but mm -hmm. yeah but i think what we're going to send you is it's like the square the panel mini the awesome. panel mini yeah. yeah oh that's and, so cool man i'm so stoked you guys yeah. just made my day that's awesome that so, so awesome. look look for that coming soon um, awesome. And thank you very much. You can also, and I hate to sound like a commercial, but you know, <laughs> they are a sponsor of, of this show and of the monthly prize pack. You can also use the bat force 10 for a 10% discount code at loomcube.com. And, uh, that includes, you know, the lights. I really am interested in some of the stands that they now have too. Um, yeah, I got a those. couple of those. 
Oh, you do? Yeah. You, how yes. how big are those things? I'm I've been curious. Okay, Damn. So it's kind of like a tripod. I think, what? Uh, man, I don't know how. It's like three feet or some many, shit. How many inches it is, but uh, it's pretty cool. I have my phone on one right now, so that's awesome. Having yeah. uh, I, I guess that's that's one thing I'm gonna have to get because I I kind of wish at certain times I could have the Loom Cube kind of pointing down a little bit more. Yeah, right. Um, the good thing is though they're versatile, so if you you have like a, a remote or some kind of button for your camera, you can't actually hold it and then take the shot. Yeah. You know, if you want a different kind of angle of lighting, sometimes I'll do that. I'll kind of just hold it and then just take the photo. I have uh, one of their D DSLR uh, mounts. I really high highly recommend the mount too. Um, because yeah, I put my Loom Cube on the mount and then I kind of, I have a, uh, microphone stand for my little home studio. <laughs> I use it on that. I mean, that's one reason why I'm more interested in getting an official Loom Cube stand because so, so I don't have to drag that thing out. Um, but yeah, that little mount, I actually probably need about two of them for my for my lights. I've used that too. Um, actually, for our wedding recently, I did a lot of the photos just by having it kind of on a tripod, but then I used that mount with a Loom Cube to brighten it up and it worked, mm -hmm. uh, worked cool. really good. Nice. Yeah. Why don't you, um, where, where, where did you, uh, oh my God. I don't know what I was going to say. Um, did, did I get married? You, you, posted, you posted, uh, for me. Oh, yeah. He got, he got married on a plane. Yeah, yeah we saw that. Yeah, that's what I was in the. Like, weren't you on, yeah. on a wing of a plane or Fishing something a plane. like that? A plane is so sick. Yeah, it's it was great. That story is kind of nuts. So, uh, my wife is a flight attendant, actually. Okay. Um, and oh, my cool. family has some history in aviation. I'm not in aviation personally, but we found a guy in Oregon that um, actually has a 727 on his property. That he, <laughs> He built out there, you know, you wonder like, how the hell did this guy get this out here? Because it's really in between trees, <laughs> but he built it piece by piece and put it together. Um, and we found him on Instagram and emailed him and just said, hey, do you mind if we take some wedding photos at your plane? And he was super cool about it. He's like, yeah, come on out. <laughs> you know, um, he met us out awesome. there. Yeah, he let us walk around the plane, um, take those photos. I mean, it, it turned out so much better than I could have expected. It was really cool. <laughs> That's a cool so story. So sweet. Yeah. Um, fun in... I, was, I was wondering, outside of the wedding, I'm sorry. Uh, so, like, what figures do you like to photograph, like, take more, the most pictures of? Uh, like, what you currently have in your collection now? Because I'm, like, I'm staring at everything behind you. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, <laughs> man. Like, there's so many sweet-ass oh, figs. Let me show you this one. I forgot to show you guys this one. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. That's cool. This is a, uh, so there's a that's theme that Scott Blind, if you guys don't follow him at Scott Blind on Instagram, I'm sure you guys have probably seen his work before, yeah. but he started this theme called Forgotten Figures Sunday. And, uh, um, all right. Yeah. Gotta and it's about that. using, it's, yeah, it's about using older figures and, yeah. uh, kind of like toy shots. And I love that because I have a lot of these old Kenner figures. Um, and just I've always wanted an excuse to shoot them. And um, this is one of those shots I was really proud of. I used the different versions of Batman to try to look like, you know, Bruce is looking, you know, what suit am I going to wear for tonight? Yeah. Um, and then I have the uh, the Toy Biz uh, Batcave dial in the background there. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I still and, have some of those. And those look like you just took those out of the box. Yeah, these... Um, so the the Kenner stuff I try to take really good care of just because they are older. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the times I'll just keep them um, in a plastic bag, you know, in a box somewhere. Uh, right now they're actually out, but uh, because of the rarity of those figures, I really try to keep good care of them. And those I found, uh, I think the white one and the infrared Batman at the the red one, I found those at a local uh, toy store loose like that, and they it looked like they had just been ripped out of the package. Wow, mm -hmm. they're really very good cool. shape. Very yeah, cool. these are these are a lot of fun and definitely a different way to kind of switch it up from what I normally shoot. Um, I think you were going to ask yeah. me kind of like what figs I normally shoot, and 
normally it's you know mezco uh is, i've been trying to switch it up a lot like not just do one thing um so mezco the neca figures i try to shoot a lot um uh, what else was it the super seven stuff i've been really branching out a lot more lately uh but primarily mezco is what i shoot yeah those figures are such amazing quality it's, yeah, yeah they, that's... Just, they really look good behind the lens don't when they don't break in that right this. grumps <laughs> yeah i oh, broke my, a couple of mine too and some of them that i don't want to admit that i broke <laughs> but, like I just, that bbs tried um, oh really which one did yeah. you break the Ooh. the new harley quinn oh shit PBX. yeah i was i was recording like a review i've been trying to do reviews and I was messing around with the articulation and the knee just cracked. Oof. Uh, it's it's rough though because the, the female body on the Mezco is very limited. So yeah, if you try to articulate Harley like a Batman, you probably will break it because it just doesn't yeah. move nearly the same at all. Um, you know, it's, no, it's much they're, more they're limited. Very brittle as well. Yeah. That's like that catwoman. Yeah. Uh Everybody was breaking Catwoman. Those knees were breaking left and right. Uh, uh, I, I got lucky with that. I wanted to get her, but I heard like snap, 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 snap. I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, oh, man. there was nothing but problems better for one. a long time. And when Wait they for released Michelle the... Pfeiffer. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Michelle Pfeiffer, those NECA 1 fourth scale, I'm Yo, really tempted. I-, I hope they do a Catwoman. If they do her, I'm going to have to do all four. Wow. <laughs> Because I, I mean, I don't, I try not to collect anything bigger than 112. Um, yeah. Except for that super sized TMNT. Those are probably the biggest figures that I have. Yeah. But it's hard to resist anything Keaton Batman, especially at the quality that those things are. I mean, I've seen Actually, them in person. They're amazing figures. I picked up, like, the only one thing I have that's bigger than everything else is the one fourth uh, Bat BVS. Oh, nice. But that's because, like, the store was closing. And it was like thirty <laughs> bucks, and I'm like thirty bucks. Fuck yeah! Yo, yeah. well, why not? Yeah, no, that's no, amazing. No. Deal. How, how am I gonna say no to that? <laughs> it's like a yeah, mega mesco. Yeah, thirty dollars <laughs> for a one four scale figure is a steal. So I, yeah. I think you made the right choice there. Yeah, you don't say no to that. But um, like uh, the same same thing happened. Uh, our, our buddy teases. He he found the Michelle Pfeiffer. He found two of them. And um, wow. the, the store was going out of, at a at a business, and he bought them for like forty or fifty bucks. And I was like, "You asshole! Can I get one, I get one though? No, it don't work out." <laughs> yeah, because they're normally like what one hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah. The one four oh. scale ones. I mean, they're well, now they're, I think they're going for two hundred. <clears throat> oh wow! They just put them back up on BBTF. So yeah, I was surprised they decided to re-release those. Um, cause they have been really hard to find. I don't think I've ever seen one of the one four scale Batman figures in person. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. The, the, the penguin too, which is phenomenal. Yeah. It looks incredible. Yeah. Well, uh, we're getting close to almost an hour and, uh, time flies. Let you get, you yeah. <laughs> let you get back to you your life out. and your new wife. Um, <laughs> but Nate, Don't we wanted to really, Thank you so much for coming on and, um, you know, extend, you know, our, our mutual respect to you and, uh, appreciate all that you do for us. Um, you know, you, you, you give us encouragement and in, inspiration to improve our photography, but also, you know, I, I look at artists like you and I, I try to learn, I, I study, what did he do here? I, I like the fact that you kind of explained how you did that light wash on that thing. I'm going to, maybe try to do that myself on a figure um, sometime soon. But anyway, um, thank you again so much. Thank you, Nate. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for coming, buddy. It's awesome. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. Like I said, I've been a big fan, so to be asked to be a part of this is is huge for me. And thanks again for the giveaway. I mean, You're welcome. blowing me away. I, I didn't expect that to be a part of this. So I really appreciate that. And uh, the kind words about my photography. And if you guys ever have questions about anything, I'm, I'm an open book. Like don't hesitate to ask me. I'd, I'd be happy to get on a live with you and kind of look at your setup and give you some tips if I can. I mean, sure. I'm not an expert by any means, but there's definitely things I've learned over time that helped me. That would be great. All right. 
We'll do. Well, I'm going to reach out because I'm going to need some help. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, hey, though. Yeah, we all started somewhere, man. You got to learn. That's yeah. the only way you get better is by learning. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's it for episode seven. Um, you can find him on Instagram at figfan underscore Nate. Give him a follow. Let's get him up to 9,000. Better. Yes. <laughs> Peace out. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good night. All right. How are you going?